one. Recording is on. Boom. Go Thanks, ahead. everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, I would like to give a short introductionary demo of the new Lightning Node that we de developed in the LMPBP Standards Association, supported by BitPhoenix and Fulgur Ventures. This LMP Node, uh, why, why we did a new node, actually? Why do we need a new node for the Lightning Network? Well, the first time we asked ourselves this question was uh, at the beginning of this year. And as you probably know, the LNPBP Association, it uh, governs and tries to uh, orchestrate the development of layer two and layer three technologies on top of Bitcoin and Lightning Network. And the name LNPBP starts stands for Lightning Network Protocol, Bitcoin Protocol, with a certain analogies to TCP IP. And the term was coined by Jack Amazuko. And together we have set up this association to develop this stack of protocol. And one of the core technologies uh, in this stack is a client-side validation, the paradigm proposed by Peter Tolt, and the smart contract platform created around the concept of client-side validation. Uh, the main two benefits of the smart contracts called RGB are privacy and scalability, in particular because they are able to work on top of LNPBP, meaning they are working on top of the Lightning Network as well. So you are not limited and not restricted by the scalability of blockchain layer, which is always really poor. And you are also not restricted by a very poor privacy of the blockchain layer. We have given a lot of video demonstrations uh, explaining what is client-side validation and RGB is. So today I wouldn't spend time on that. I will just briefly mention that one of the one of the use cases for RGB is issuance of different forms of financial and fungible assets, including stable coins. And one of the reasons why this project gained uh, an interest is that there are certain intentions of uh, doing stable coins like use the tether on top of the rgb to bring them to the lightning network so with all these efforts we have developed the core rgb technology specifications uh, and it also involved a lot of different other standards not directly related even to fungible assets because rgb can be used outside of fungible assets we did such things as uh, protocols layer 3 protocols for storage and uh, computing and all of that actually brought us to the point when we understood that when we were implementing rgb uh, we've done an on-chain part but uh, while rgb is completely compatible with the lightning network and doesn't require modification of the lightning network i will be explaining that in a bit more details during the demo and showcasing uh, the compatibility with the lightning network doesn't mean that it is easy to integrate into existing lightning nodes and lightning node software and these are two completely different things the compatibility with the lightning network and the integration with existing nodes and we found that it's not only we who face these problems uh, the lightning network was created ad hoc to solve a specific use case of micropayments. And right now, two years after the start, after the launch, and mainly five years after the start, it still uh, solves the single uh, way of uh, establishing a channel. You need, you need laterally funded cha channels funded by a single party for payments between two parties, plus payments that can be routed using HDLC mechanism through the network. And while there are many things that you can do with the Lightning Network, much more advanced uh, micropayments and payment technologies, like you can have a bi bidirectional funded channels, you can have uh, channel factories, you can have a sp splits inside the channels, and many, many other things, 
uh, which no require nearly none modification of the core standards, they are not very suitable and not yet adopted by the Lightning Network because of this restriction of the Lightning Node implementations, of existing Lightning Node implementations. And moreover, many new technologies, promising technologies such as discrete log contracts, uh, L2 and RGB in particular, uh, they also can work with a Lightning Network. But it happens that actually the software prevents from simple integration of new components, especially components that require the change the transaction structure or trick public keys like RGB into existing lightning nodes. So that's why we started with the idea of uh, creating a new lightning node uh, with the Rust language, which is the language of choice or for the developments for the system level developments that we are doing. And uh, the, the, the aim and the design criteria for this node was uh, to make it modular and extensible. So it will be really easy, not just to have an RGB there, but also to plug in more technologies into it, to experiment, to play with the such things as Schnorr signatures, discrete log contracts, whatever may, will, may happen after, and have this node as a standard for fast experimentation and uh, cutting edge development of the layer two and layer three technologies. And uh, we have designed an architecture for building such modular nodes, which are not only modular, but also very good scalable. They can work in the cloud environments in multi-instance environments or the same code works on the mobile phone. I was giving an overview of the node architecture a few weeks ago, so I refer everybody to to that presentation who are interested, and uh, we will post probably later in under YouTube video the references to the related presentations. So we did the LNP node with the same architecture. We are doing other types of nodes, and these other types of node we we developed is of course RGB node running the smart contract platform. And uh, another note, which we started developing and it will be completed down the road, is a Bitcoin indexing node that is a replacement for more efficient and private replacement for Electrum server. Uh, with this node architecture, we also found that the Lightning uh, networking stack, the stack of Lightning network protocols used in the Lightning network, is very good for building different applications not even related directly to the payments. So we have a standardized and extended that set of standards and actually what we have created uh, is a, a framework with which you can build a very reliable and connected services with an end-to-end -end encryption utilizing the stack of uh, utilizing the stack of lightning network uh, protocols and uh, these services can work without DNS. They can work on top of Tor. They can use work in peer-to-peer -peer mode, and they can run a very complex remote procedure call types of APIs like enterprise system bus, service bus uh, level services uh, without much effort. And actually, with this set of technologies, we have built the node that I will be presenting today. And the node, the lightning node, as the other nodes we are doing, is consisting of multiple microservices, or another name for that are demons. It's not necessarily necessar necessarily uh, standalone processes. It's uh, they can also run as a thread with under the single processes, like on mobile phone. But these nodes, these services, they are separated from each other, informationally and programmatically, meaning that they share no information, there is no shared memory between them, and all communications happen through this networking, which can actually happen without even internet being involved right inside the memory, but utilizing the same set of networking protocols. And these de demons or services, they do share a message bus, 
internally, if you use daemons on the same process or on the same machine, this message bus works with a zero message queue. And they basically send messages to each other in peer-to-peer -peer way, communicating with each other and orchestrating the work that they are doing. And uh, in terms of integration with a such lightning node, uh, the client, home online interface client that we developed, or wallet or any other software that you will develop, it will talk to this node as a, uh, basically by talking to individual service through this message bus. And with a node, we do provide a library that helps to abstract the complexity of the networking protocols and serialization, deserialization of different messages and just simply do a function call. But for each of these function call underneath, there will be a call to the service bus and there will be uh, all this architecture involved. So basically, even if you use the node on the mobile or with the command line, the actual services may be running at the same moment in the cloud and you will be connecting them via the network. Uh, this is an overview of the architecture. Now, to understand better how the demo works, I have to explain a bit more about which services uh, the Lightning node, LMP node, is consisting of. Uh, well, in case of LMP node, it is the most complex node that we have of all these three of Bitcoin indexing node, RGB node, and uh, Lightning node. Uh, we have a multiple demons. And we have a single separate service or daemon per each connection and a single separate service per each channel. And channel is co and connection is different things. The connection is a peer-to-peer -peer connection, direct connection over the Lightning network. And the connection, uh, even with a normal Lightning network, the basic Lightning network, doesn't imply that there is some payments going on. It's a just simple networking communication between two peers. And when peers decide to open a channel, they send a channel opening request over this connection and the channel is established. So the channel and connection are different entities and different services. And the interesting thing that while today the Lightning Network implies that for each connection you have a single channel, there is no technical lim limits to that and uh, you can have a multiple channels per connection, or you can even have a multi-peer channels which involve multiple connections. And the node that we developed, I will be also showing you all the data structure, everything, it already include this understanding that there might be multi-peer channels. There might be multiple channels per connection. And you will see that even right now, while we are working with a single a peer to peer channel with a two peer channel, you will see that the remote node is not like in all existing Lightning nodes, uh, like remote balances and so on. It's not a single entry, it's a table, like a balance per peer, meaning that if we will have more than a single remote peer, the support for this type of channels is already included into the node architecture and all the data structure. So the two core type of services are connections and channels. And connections, they do not know anything about lightning messages they do exchange. They only send and receive the messages. And they are the only thing they are able to do is to understand they have a routing table, which message should be proceed by which daemon. And they use that routing table to forward that messages from the Lightning Network into specific daemon. So that the messages related to gossip protocol and routing get to the gossip daemon and routing daemon responsible for computing the routing. And if there will be a new routing mechanics more efficient with the Lightning Network, the only thing you, can, you need to do is to do another implementation of the routing daemon and replace the daemon with the new one and everything will work, or they can work even at the same time in parallel, supporting both previous and new version of the routing. The same when the peer uh, daemon receives the request specific to a channel, it forwards this request to a channel. And the channel, uh, channel daemon does uh, the main 
thing, it does actual processing of the messages related to the channel. However, you, as I said already, we started using Lightning Network connectivity, not only for payments but and channel management, but also for other services. So even on-chain RGB will be talking through the same Lightning Network with other peers, transferring client-validated data. It will be used for invoicing protocols, different invoicing protocols, for Bifrost node infrastructure related to decentralized exchange functionality. And it will be also used for storage and other types of channels, which are not payment channels like computing and storage related uh, escrow contract channels, Storm and Prometheus. And they all will run in the same cloud of the, of the services inside the LNP node or connected to the LNP node via these uh, message buses. And there are two message buses inside the LNP node. The one is a, a lightning, um, like lightning network message bus basically when the peer when the connecting service the peer connection receives a message from the lightning network it publishes it to the lightning network message bus and the daemon that is responsible for it you, you get the message through the routing from that bus and also when some daemon need to send a message to specific peer he published this message to this bus and the message is published by the appropriate peer connection daemon. And the second bus is a control bus. So all the non-lightning network messages uh, related to the RPC and control messages between the different services are circulating through this bus. In particular, there is LNPD, the core managing daemon, that is responsible for launching new instances of channel demons when the request of the new channel opening arrives and so on. Uh, it utilizes this control bus. And when you will be connecting to the Lightning node, you will connect to the control bus from the, your client, from the wallet, from command line interface, and uh, such services as Prometheus Storm and decentralized exchange functionality, it will be, they will be also implemented as a services connecting these uh, message buses. Now, coming, coming to the channel daemon, the core daemon managing the channel. The channel daemon is built in a way that it is, it is able to manage any type of a payment channel or actually state channel. By state channel, we mean two things. The first, the state channel exists as a set of unpublished Bitcoin transactions, actually a graph of unpublished Bitcoin transactions. And you know that with the Lightning Network, we have a commitment transaction and HTLC uh, success and timeout transactions, which are part form the cha channel graph. Uh, other types of channel may have different transaction graphs. For instance, uh, with the channel factories, you will have a graph of graph, like you will have a graph per channel plus a generic graph for multi-peer channel factory. With uh, DLCs, DLC, discrete log contracts, they will add transaction outputs into a commitment transaction with their dependent graphs. So. The way we implemented the channel daemon is basically we abstracted it to the level that it manages abstract transaction graph plus abstract state. And the channel daemon is made of extensions. Everything in channel daemon is extension and even channel daemon is extension to itself. So there is a very well-defined API uh, which allows each extension to modify transaction graph and maintain some state. Also, this API uh, allows channel daemon to save the state of all extensions for some persistent layer, like to disk storage. And there are a set of drivers which allows to support different persistent providers. It could be a Postgres database in the server. It could be my SQL, SQLite database on the mobile. It could be a file storage. It could be, you can probably even plug in if you need a Google Drive as a remote storage provider through this driver's interface. And channel daemon uh, stores on each update the state of all extensions. So extensions expose that state. Each of the extensions have their own isolated state. 
and uh, they are organized as a pipeline. So to better understand what are those extensions, I will start with this. With this. There are three categories of extension inside each channel. The first category of extensions are called channel constructors. What they do is basically they assemble an initial transaction graph for a particular type of channel. And uh, meaning that they start with an empty channel uh, transaction graph and they create the basic version of all transaction. In case of the Lightning Network, uh, the transaction graph includes a commitment transaction with the two outputs, to local and to remote. No HTLCs are added, no, no payments yet happened. So it's a very basic commitment transaction. And we call this extension Vault 3 because it implements the transaction structure from the Vault 3 standard. And uh, we already reserved a place here for, for scamming different types of forms of constructors, such as Taproot and L2 because both with the Schnorr signatures, we will need to modify the output scripts for the commitment transaction, or even use a different number of outputs. And we will have completely different transaction structure for L2 as well. So basically, to do an L2 support with LMP node, all you need is to fill in a few blocks of code within L2 file, and that's all. I will show how it looks in, in, in real code. So these are the first category, are the constructors. And there, are, there could be only a single channel constructor per channel. The second category of extensions are graph modifiers. And what they, these graph modifiers do is basically they take a transaction graph of a channel and modify its structure arbitrarily the way they need. Uh, for instance, they can add outputs. They can tweak public keys in outputs or they can tweak signatures. Uh, all of this, the, the actual transaction graph is kept in form of partially signed Bitcoin transactions. So additionally to just the transaction information, you can include and keep and update extra data related to public key tweaks, signatures, and so on in the partially signed Bitcoin transaction meta, meta fields. And also, this PSBD format is used for persistence. So if the channel uh, was aborted or you lost your server, if you did a backups with a proper driver mechanism, you, you will have a set of PSBD transactions which you, with all the information required for, pro, pro, for creating a signatures, meaning that you don't need to dig into the SQLite file finding the state, the, the specific key and derivation path used to derivate that channel state. Uh, it's all in a transaction, actually signed Bitcoin transaction. You just take a file, you can analyze it, of course, but basically you, you can work with it without Lightning Network nodes and, use, uh, and publish transaction via a different way to the blockchain if you need to. Uh, so, uh, the channel modifiers are basically apply arbitrary modifications to this partially signed Bitcoin transaction and their graph. And uh, there are three categories of, well, like, there are no categories, but I, I will categorize into three groups the existing graph modifiers, which we already have a template for. The first group is basically modifiers implementing specific existing Lightning Network features. You probably know that the Lightning Network constantly develops, and they, uh, the, the Lightning Network uh, contributors, they modify the standards, both standards, all the time. And there were recent developments like adding Ancore outputs, allows uh, which allow to commitment transaction. And these Ancore outputs allow you not to negotiate the fee but to use a replace by fee mechanism when closing the channel. So for instance, and they are signaled by, signaled by a feature flag in the Lightning Network. So there are channels using them and not using them. And if you need to use uh, uh, uncored outputs, all you need is to plug in this extension into the channel and it will add necessary uncore outputs by itself. Another example of the 
is the shutdown script, another feature, the current lightning network again. It, it includes a specific script into the closing transaction uh, and uh, it is implemented as a graph modifier. The second group of the graph modifiers are basically HTLCs and PTLCs related to the payment mechanics. Uh, today, you know that each payment uh, in Lightning Network is structured that you create a new output called HTLC output, uh, offer or receive, or offering or receiving output, and also two HTLC transactions. Uh, guaranteeing you that the payment will happen automat uh, in an atomic way throughout the whole network. Uh, HTLC stands for hash time log the contract. Uh, and these transaction outputs, HTLC transaction outputs and necessary transaction are added to the, uh, to the graph with the HTLC extension, which is a graph modifier. And also HTLC extension maintains its state for each channel so basically it also persisted state but the state is maintained separate from the rest of the channel state uh, htlc is vulnerable to certain forms of attacks that's why there is a proposal called ptlc pay to elliptic curve point uh, lock contracts and they involve uh, schnorr signatures and adapter signatures so it's not yet there uh, out there yet, but with this mechanism, you can have both HTLC and PTLC even in the same uh, channel because both of them are separate extensions, not sharing the state between themselves, applying necessary modifications to the transaction graph and storing the necessary state inside the PSBD as well. The third, third group of the graph modifiers are modifiers for new specific protocols like discrete log contracts which apply additional uh, outputs and graphs adding them to the channel or light speed micropayments which involves rgb uh, so they are not implemented in the current node but we have a template where anybody who is interested to implement them uh, can just write a about a hundred line of code, and that that is all that is required to make them working in the basic version. Uh, the final group of uh, of extensions of the channel are finalizers, and finalizers they finalize the existing transaction. They can't modify that structure of the transaction. They can't add new outputs, but what they can do, they can produce a fix to a public keys they can for instance reorder outputs and it's it's very useful because uh for instance you know that there is a lexicographic ordering of transaction outputs uh in lightning network in the current lightning network but there is a proposal to get rid of it with the specific feature flag and basically lexicographic ordering which is bip 90 bip 69 is uh 96 is actually an extension in lightning node that we read is an another extension that is modifies the transaction graph reordering the outputs so these are finalizers and as i said they are all talking uh, they are all organized in a pipeline inside the channel daemon and the pipeline is structured in a way that this the way the, the, the way it the channel daemon applicates this extension to the transaction graph is uh, deterministically defined. So you basically when you configure a channel, you configure it with an order of different extension applied. So the lexicographic ordering is always applied before RGB public key tweaking because if it will apply be applied after it will uh, destroy the deterministic definition of which output is used for the for storing commitment, the RGB commitment. And as I said, uh, the channel daemon uses uh, different storage drivers and storage providers to automatically store the state and snapshot the state of all this extension after each channel update. So let's move from the presentation. Am I still online or maybe the connectivity got lost? Yeah, yes, we can hear you. We all hear oh, you. Okay. 
Okay. Everything you is are. So uh, I, I will move a bit into the code, uh, just spending about five to 10 minutes showcasing how it looks into in the code, and then we'll move to the uh, demo of using the Lightning node. Uh, all business logic related to everything that I told is part of LNP BKP core library. This library hosts everything that is re required for creating uh, LNPBP layer two, three services. So it is consisted of extensions to Bitcoin protocol. Do you see my screen right now, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Uh, with the code, with, with uh, Yes, the projects yeah. and the, the code. If you yeah. select uh, some rough coding, you will probably see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is a Bitcoin protocol extensions, uh, which allows, for instance, a simple lexicographic ordering or implementation of specific beeps or additions to partially signed Bitcoin transaction and many, many, many other things like single use seals, deterministic Bitcoin commitments and so on. Uh, there is an RGB, which I wouldn't be talking today. We already spent many calls related to RGB matters, but all the code for RGB validation, verification, contract creation is part of the core library. And paradigms like client-side validation, single-use seals, commitment verification, and strict encoding. But the, the part we will be touching today is LMP, Lightning Network Protocol. And it is consisted of networking network protocol stacks, which I was already presenting a few calls ago, like this network layers. So each layer here on this slide is basically represented rented by a directory going from the connectivity layer, transport layer, working on top of uh, TCP or web sockets or zero message queue sockets. So you can connect nodes now, lightning nodes through web sockets by bypassing firewalls if you need to. There is a session level protocol implementing the encoding and session management uh, with a noise lightning network noise protocol, or you can add new encoders here. There is a presentation layer responsible for decoding. When you decode the data cryptographically, you need to deserialize the actual message and comments passing through the interface. And this is what presentation layer does. And such things as TLVs and the Lightning Network payloads are part of this protocol. And the final, the most important part is the application layer. And here we have uh, uh, definitions of uh, Lightning Network messages. So all messages that circulate in the peer-to-peer -peer Lightning Network uh, there is a finite set from bolts, and additionally to that, we are adding here a messages required for RGB uh, working on top of Lightning Network and RGB working outside of the Lightning Network. The only message that we need to add to the system is this assign funds message. I will explain how it works a bit later. Uh, again, it is used by both on-chain and Lightning Network part. And it uses a type ID. So it is standard compatible because standards allow you to add new types of messages. The num it's just that the message identifier for this type have to be larger than uh, 32,000 something. And here I selected the identifier, which is uh, part of the hash of the RGB string. Uh, which is a recommended way of adding the new types of messages. And while I'm showing you these messages, I will explain you how it is easy to add new type with, um, of messages with the LMP library. So the only thing you need to do is to add an uh, entry to the enum messages, define with an uh, attribute the number for its type, some display string that will be shown in the logs. I will show you how it looks like, and create a structure implementing strict encode and strict decode uh, traits with this structure. That's all. You don't need to write anything that will serialize that, send this message over. You just create the structure and call it send it, specifying the remote peer. The rest is managed by the library by all these stacks. Uh, and there are such things as a peer connectivity, which manages all this serialization and sending of the message. And uh, there is a special uh, module, Crate library called LNTBP services, which allows you to run the peer connectivity in the network, enterprise system bus, RPC calls, 
with the, all controllers and all abstractions that are used throughout the Lightning node and the rest of software. Uh, so this is that's all for networking. Now going into the plugin structure and channel management. There is a basic ch channel definition, and as I said, the channel is constructed of three types of plugins: a single constructor implementing the channel extension, uh, extenders, a chain queue, extend extension queue, meaning the strictly ordered set of extensions applied one after one, and a modifiers. Uh, actually, they are finalizers, so I, I need to change the, the name of this field. Uh, and all of them, they follow some specific nomenclature. So with each type of channel, and uh, what I mean by type of channel, there is a payment channels of the Lightning Network, or Lightning Network channels, uh, unidirectional uh, two-peer channels. There will be a factories, which are different form, multi-peer channels. There there will be bidirectional channels, and there are other types of channels like for storage or uh, computing. So these forms of channels that are supported, they are here shown as a separate directories. And basically, each of those channels will have their own nomenclature of extensions. And nomenclature of extensions that I showed on this slide is a specific nomenclature for payment channels. So other, others will have other nomenclature, but the same categories of extensions. And everything is basically extension, and extension defines some specific API. It, it, part, it proceeds the peer messages. So when peer message uh, from other peer are coming to the channel, it is forwarded to each of the extension in the very in the defined order. It has a way to export state and it has a way to apply its state and everything to the transaction graph, which is actually a graph of partially signed Bitcoin transaction. It's actually abstracted from specific format. It could be a transaction or a partially signed Bitcoin transaction or a liquid transaction or liquid partially signed Bitcoin transaction. So you can use that for different underlying blockchains or the game with some iterat iterators and ability to, to modify it. And that's what extension is. And uh, for the specific payment channel, we have these extensions, categories of extension defined in these directories. So for instance, for there is a constructor for current uh, Lightning Network channels, and it has its own internal state here. Uh, it has an identity. So this is the implementation of the nomenclature of extension for payment channels. You see these types of extensions that I was showing on the slide here and each uh, each uh, extension has to identify itself and it process update process updates from peers by updating its own internal state and when the time is right it is called to apply the internal state to the transaction graph and what it does it, it constructs the graph by adding outputs to the transaction and here it uses a special generators of these outputs providing the parts of its state and they are in their own order construct the scripts and everything that is required i was very surprised actually to find out because my original plan was to use miniscript to construct these outputs i was really surprised to find out that miniscript is incompatible with the current Lightning Network, uh, and uh, you can't use it for doing these outputs. It's basically I was talking to SIPA, to to Peter Wheel. Uh, the mini script allows you to convert uh, a mini script string, which is human readable uh, explanation of the logic of the locking script, into in a deterministic way to a Bitcoin. Uh, script, but uh, when you need a specific Bitcoin script, like in Lightning Network, which is part of standard, you can't do the other way around. You can't find a mini script that matches that uh, Bitcoin uh, script. Well, you can construct it, but when you run, when, when you will translate it again back to the Bitcoin script, it will be already different, more efficiently organized. But in Lightning Network, we don't need efficiency of the scripting. We need to follow the standards. So unfortunately, we can't use a mini script here. Sorry, Maxine, uh, may I ask you a question yeah. about, uh, about this point? Yeah. The, you, you can't build a channel using a mini script at all, or you or you can't yeah, no, uh, no. build the channel with the normal standard and then try to spend it with mini script, or you can't even try to, to build it from, from the beginning with mini script. 
Well, well, in Lightning, you can do nearly everything. The only question is, would it be compatible to the other peer? So if you connect to existing Lightning Network peer, and uh, right, you will right. use, use a mini script to build your transaction outputs, you will produce invalid signature. And the peer will just break the connective connection and channel with you. But if you will signal with a um, uh, feature flag that you are using non bolt compatible, but some mini script based uh, output descriptors for the commitment transactions, but it will be a different form of lightning payment channel. But uh, uh, I don't know how you can easy, it's easy to do with the C Lightning or LMD, but here it's very easy because the only thing that you need to do is to replace, for instance, this with a mini script, and that's all. And you, you, you name that extension in a different name, and you have the thing working with all these extension mechanics. Thank you. So, uh, so uh, and if you need to do L2, for instance, there, there, there are files where you can paste the code and do the implementation. I will show you really simple implementation of how the extension is looking like. This is a complete extension to the Lightning Network channel that does lexicographic reordering of all transaction outputs and inputs within the whole graph. So the only thing that you need to do is to identify the extension. And in this case, we're ignoring all incoming messages from the peer network because there are no messages that can affect the way how we lexicographically order. But if we would like to customize this somehow and it at a message exchanging information on exchanging information between peers on the ordering, you will just write an implementation here supporting that message. We have no internal site here. And the only thing that we need to do is to we need to get uh, commitment outputs and apply lexicographic ordering from the Bitcoin uh, library here. Or, and then iterate the graph with the iterator and for each uh, transaction apply lexicographic ordering, which applies ordering all the inputs and in outputs. If we will go to the transaction implementation, we will see that the psychographic ordering for transaction orders basically inputs and outputs. And for PPST, it's a bit more complex, but basically this is the way you write an extension to the Lightning Network node. And I wouldn't say that L2 will be that small, but I think it will fit three, 500 lines of code only. Uh, there are extenders. Uh, as I told you, so we have HTLCs, PDLCs here. PDLCs again are not implemented, but basically you need to take a HTLCs and do re-implementation with a PTLC specific scripts and state and like, like 500 lines of code. So that's how this, the whole story is looking like and working like. And uh, I welcome everybody to start contributing because for instance, another, another example of a simple structure is the life cycle management for a payment channel because each type of channel has its own life cycle. So this is a bold compatible life cycle. And you, you just declare, like everything is declarative. You declare the anon with the states, you declare uh, what, these states should implement, they should be encodable, you, you need to display them and so on and so forth. And you use it in your extensions, like switching the states from one to one. And this is a part of the core library. What, but the main node is actually compiled not from the core library, but from LNP repository, LNP node repository, which uses this library. And what LNP repository is about? Why we need to separate? Because library is an abstracted set of interfaces and APIs implementing a business logic, standard, standardized part of the business logic, which have to be strictly audited, monitored, reviewed, maintained, and so on. The node is actually a wrapper around this functionality that wraps this business logic and standards into threads, processes, interfaces, uh, that adds a specific storage mechanics, command line consoles, uh, configuration files, and all, all this thing that you need to have in order to, write, uh, to run the actual node. 
And when you will need to embed this node or talk to this node from other languages other than Rust, what you will need to do is to use a SDK. We already have RGB SDK for RGB node, and there will be an LNP SDK for using the LNP node functionality. But the only way you can extend the node and the Lightning Network, like do a new type of channel, is basically um, is basically right in Rust, because we need to to review and make sure that these parts are really strictly following the standards. And the the the, the, the LNP node consists of daemons, like a folder per daemon, managing daemon, pure connectivity, routing everything remoted to remote procedure calls, basically internal interfaces within the daemons, gossiping, command line tool, and channel D, implementing different forms of uh, storage providers. Right now we have only disk storage provider, but we will add uh, SQLite and others. And uh, taking example of storage uh, of channel daemon, like you process a specific request or a message from peer network with this handler functions. And you implement the business logic here for if you need to add a peer network message, you just write that type of code block and that's all for a specific channel. So these are payment channels, but you can do a daemon for other types of channels like channel factories. Uh, Okay, I think we are ready to go to the demo. The only last thing I would like to mention before starting the demo is that the original idea with this LNP node was to, to do it really simple and uh, as an extension to other existing node software. We selected a C Lightning, for instance, because they had a similar architecture and we, we take a lot of experience from how the C Lightning organized and what Christian Baker suggested from his experience of developing C Lightning. However, unfortunately, we, like we were going with this plan of hybrid node, adding RGB functionality through LNP node to C Lightning till the end of August. Uh, and we failed with that plan. We failed because uh, we found at the very end that some specifics of C Lightning architecture doesn't allow us to do that kinds of modifications to the transaction structure that we need to do with RGB. And we need to rewrite all parts of C Lightning in order to get it compatible, meaning not the whole C Lightning, but each module have, to, we need to change parts of each of the modules, meaning that we have to maintain a full-fledged fork of C Lightning. And there were no indications that Blockstream is interested in merging that back into the main. And instead we decided to go with the complete re-implementation of the whole Lightning. The second way we were trying to uh, simplify our life uh, is not to write everything from scratch, but take a Rust Lightning library that exists uh, as part of LDK, Lightning Development Kit by Square Crypto. Unfortunately, we failed with that. And the plan that I were, was discussing with, um, with, with all those who involved in this project management uh, with BitPhoenix and others was basically that we will do starting from the beginning of September, uh, we will use Rust Lightning and we will be able to develop the RGB support within the Rust Lightning in two months. And that was the plan we were following. Unfortunately, it failed again, as, as you already suggested. And the reason it, it failed is that uh, the Rust Lightning library is much less modular than C Lightning. And again, you need to rewrite it simply just to add the stuff that we need. And what we need is actually the actual modification of the transaction graph, not the structure of the transaction graph, but of outputs of the transaction, of each transaction within the graph. And we need to talk to the RGB minus at the same time, maintain additional state data, and uh, Rust Lightning just lacks the proper modularization. The second reason, unfortunately, it is being developed in a very specific path and it takes more than nine months to get a, a PR merged into back into the Rust Lighting. So uh, instead of 
simple way when we could just add RGB to uh, Rust Lightning, I had to write the Lightning node from scratch. Like you see the code, it has no shared parts with any other project, unfortunately, meaning, but on the other side, it gives a huge flexibility. So we were able to make this Lightning node as modular, as as extensible, and ready to go tool for doing many more uh, experiments other than just RGB. Uh, so I think that wasn't a bad thing. But before the demo, what I would like to say is that I would like to ask you to be to understand that this is a lightning node, which is only two months. Uh, the age of this Lightning node is two months. And the most of its functionality is done within the last month when we found that we can't use uh, Rust Lightning. And I, I don't know that anybody is able to write a full Lightning node within two months time, doing also RGB releases and the rest of stuff. So this is a very simple functionality. But, and uh, I'm not sure that the whole dem demo will run smoothly. It's, it's an alpha stage thing. Uh, many parts are not there yet. Uh, the only thing that it, it is able to do is to demonstrate the connectivity between nodes, establishing of the channels, whole life cycle of the workflows related to channel formation, signatures, uh, state management, payments, HTLCs, and the rest of the story. What it lacks is actually it lacks everything related to closing of the channels, maintaining any, any non-standard circumstances. It lacks storage providers for now, but again, the, the, to add a storage provider, it will take like up to a day of work. Uh, and I assume that contributors, there will be contributors who are, will be interested in doing such things like doing a SQLite implementation or PostgreSQL provider or some other type of provider. It, it, it already has RGB asset management, uh, but uh, it lacks, uh, it, it, it lacks uh, integration in terms that you have to do a lot of manual work right now. I will be doing, it's possible to do it. I will be doing it from a command line console, but there is nothing yet wallet related here or storage management related here. So you have to do that manually. And the task that we will be solving over the next few weeks is basically adding these parts of, of meat around the node. So you don't need to bother with a, with the key management yourself. Uh, for the demo purposes, we don't have a connectivity to Electrum server or anything like that. We wouldn't be mining transactions today, otherwise it will take for eternity. And I simply, had in time to, to to try the whole demo because I was trying the demo and workflow and if I add all this complexity it will it just takes forever. So in in a few weeks from now there will be another demo with these parts, basically with a wallet and connectivity to the Bitcoin core and Electrum server. Here we are connected uh, to the RGB uh, node. I will be showing all the cycles and again Please, sorry if something will go wrong. Just as a proof, right before the code, uh, the call, I was uh, testing the whole demo. So it, it runs. You see that it it establish channels. It finds channels. It it adds some capacity. It does uh, transfer of the funds. You see the local capacity, remote capacity. You can add. Um, uh, RGB asset, like with a refill command here, and you see that there is um, remote balances. So there is, just to distinguish terminology, there is a local capacity which always millisatoshes. It's a Bitcoin, like local capacity, and remote capacity is, is the amount of millisatoshes on the other peer, here it's 10. Uh, and you see that we have the peer ID and the capacity because we can have multiple peers, as I said. But also there are assets added to the channel, local balances per asset. Again, sorry for the user interface, it doesn't show the ticker, it shows the asset ID, but I think it's it's for, forgivable for, for the demo. And remote balances for those assets allocated to the remote peer. Here there are none, and after that, 
uh, with a transfer, the remote peer gets the balance term of the thing. It actually pseudo pseudo USD tether, ten of pseudo sense allocated to it with this comment transfer. Uh, so it works. I'm just showing you this before the demo. Just if something will not work because I'm a bit nervous and also didn't have a lot of sleep over the last months, you, you will see that actually it works. It's just my hands doing something wrong with it because the, the stuff is really complex in terms of when you try to manage it from a command line tool. So let's start everything from scratch. And here are the logging of our oh. Don't need it. Maxim, I, I feel yeah. more suspense for this than for the presidential election. I'm really tense. <laughs> <laughs> so what we need for the demo is uh, the following. First, we need, in fact, an RGB node uh, because when we will be trying to add assets, it's not required. You can do all the lightning specific stuff without RGB node at all. But today I will plan to, to, to show the assets as well. So we need an RGB node. I have it already, I have it already compiled. Uh, here, I wouldn't spend time on demonstrating how to download, compile everything, because uh, today I wouldn't publish the release of everything. It will be published next Monday, and we will also publish the instructions how to build and compile everything. But I have it completely compiled here. Uh, you see that before, uh, before the compilation, I was just doing the cargo install and compilation of everything. So I have the node uh, here. It's a, it's actually not RGB node. It's a command line tool to work with that. And I will start RGB node here. Uh, we start RGB node with RGB daemon command. We provide a data directory where everything will be kept. If we wouldn't provide it, we'll use some arbitrary path from team P or something. We provide a binary directory where all the binaries for other demons, because RGB is also multi-demon node. We say it to run in verbose mode, one uh, three flags, meaning that it will provide the work information. Here, just informational. And four will may mean all tracing info. We don't need tracing info. It will be two verbose here. And we need support for fungible type of contracts because RGB node plugs in with the different contracts. And just to show uh, what components of the Lightning node are, I will do, you see that there are all together LNP node and uh, RGB node with command line interfaces, RGB and LNP clean, uh, there are fungible daemon running the fungible assets and stash daemon running, keeping the stash, the client validated data of RGB. Uh, and there are of course, different daemons related to channel management and lighting node. So let's run the node finally. Here we are. Uh, it starts and we will try yeah it started so it's registered an asset uh, that schema a schema for fungible assets here you, you can dig into it if you're interested we don't need it right now this is a schema serialized as a backstring we can list an assets i already issued an asset which called usd tether uh if we would like to we can do another one like fungible issue, COVID. Uh, a lot of COVID allocating it to some specific transaction output. Yeah, so we issued a COVID virus on the RGB. I think it's the most usable thing that you can do with RGB today. And uh, now if we will list asset, we will see that we have actually two of them. This is RGB node. Okay, now back to the lightning part. Uh, the lightning node is started as LNP daemon. 
uh, again, we don't need the most viable no, mode to debug is enough. Uh, we need to provide path to RGB uh, connect, connection string. It's a string that allows it to connect to the RGB daemon with those, with those message buses and everything. Right now, it's um, a zero message queue socket formed as a, a URL. We have a special standard for this Lightning Network protocol based connectivity supporting zero message queue, HTTP, TCP, and everything on Tor. Here, it's just a file which is used already used by the RGB node to connect. So that's all. If you don't need RGB, this whole thing is not required, just LNPD dash three this and the node is started it, ha it has local node id important part which we will be using it uh, opens its own message bus and control buses using these files uh, creates all the stock sockets and everything and it starts in the listening mode uh, so you see that it runs a single instance. It's it's a grab command itself we are using. So 